a Jewish young man, hiding his true identity, posed as a pure-blooded German. Not only did he manage to survive, but he also became a favorite of the entire Third Reich. Isaac? At the beginning of the film, the main character tells his story. He was born on April 20, 1925, in the town of Penn, Germany. The boy was the fourth child of Azriel Perel, the owner of a shoe store, and his wife, Rebecca. Despite his very young age, he remembers his circumcision, which was performed with traditional prayers in the presence of a rabbi. He later learned that he was born on the same day as the future Chancellor of the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler. As Solomon grows older, he prepares to take a bath. Hearing drumbeats from outside, he decides to look out and see what's happening. At that moment, he sees some guys marking the windows of buildings where Jews live. The whole family is getting ready for Solomon's bar mitzvah. His sister, Berta, goes to hurry him up, saying that everything is ready and everyone is waiting for him. The boy promises to come out soon while continuing to read his book. However, a few minutes later, a pogrom starts. Jewish homes are being attacked. Angry people are throwing bricks through windows and breaking down doors. Terrified, Sally climbs out of the bath and jumps out the window. Looking around, naked, he hides in a nearby barrel. In the evening, when everything has calmed down, he peeks out of his hiding place and sees a familiar girl. She tells him that all the windows in his house have been broken. The teenager asks her for help, requesting that she go to his home and bring some clothes. But she can't, as her father forbade her from going to his house. After a moment, the girl asks him to wait a minute and brings a German uniform with a swastika. Dressed in it, Sally returns home. Entering the room, he finds his sister Berta dead, lying lifelessly on the table. After this raid, the head of the family decided to move to Poland, to the city of Łódź. The father obtained Polish passports for everyone and said that from now on, they were all Polish. Even though Sally knew that the Germans had killed Berta, he didn't want to leave. In Łódź, he met Mrs. Basha, a cashier at a cinema located right below their apartment. She singled him out among the other boys and often let him into the theater for free. Sally dreamed of becoming an actor, like Clark Gable or Eugeniusz Bodo, and the girl had a hunchback. Sitting in the theater, the boy was curious to know whether her hunch was bone or flesh. When the war started, Sally was even a bit relieved. He hoped that now his father would forget about the time he knocked a man off his bicycle and the man broke a large window. However, his relief was short-lived, as enemy fighters began dropping rockets and bombs on cities. The entire apartment shook. One day, David, the eldest son, returned from the army. He said he couldn't find his unit and wasn't given a weapon. They told him that Jews would manage on their own. He also mentioned that the Germans would win, and in a few days, they would be in the city. After hearing this, the mother and father decided that the two younger sons should be sent east. Isaac tried to persuade his father, citing Jewish texts that say a son should not leave his father and mother, but he still obeyed his father and left with Sally. On the way, Mrs. Basha caught up with them. She didn't want to let the young man go, but Isaac dragged him away from her and took him with him. In the evening, the brothers reached the river, where a large crowd had gathered. Sally managed to push through the crowd and get on a boat. However, there was no room left for Isaac, and the boat departed without him. Along the way, they encountered another boat going in the opposite direction. People on that boat said that the other side was occupied by the Soviet Union. Hitler had made a deal with Stalin and handed over the eastern part of Poland. Hearing this, panic broke out on Sally's boat, and Poles began jumping into the water. One person accidentally pushed the boy, and Sally fell into the water and started to drown. Fortunately, a Soviet soldier heard him and rescued him. In the morning, Sally spent the whole day on the shore waiting for his brother, but he never arrived. With no relatives left, the boy was sent to an orphanage in the city of Grodna, along with other Polish, Jewish, and Russian children. He spent several years there and was turned into a Soviet patriot and committed communist. Due to the non-aggression pact between Hitler and Stalin, Sally was able to receive letters from his family. His father wrote to him, saying he was happy to receive news. He was glad that Sally was safe and could study. He and Sally's mother, like all Jews, had moved to the ghetto. After some time, Sally was accepted into the Komsomol, but his commission didn't go very well. Because his father had owned a store, Sally was suspected of being associated with the bourgeoisie, but one of the workers vouched for him. After the commission, the boy was very happy, but he was attacked by one of the students who clearly did not share his love for the Bolsheviks. Sally fully embraced the ideology of the USSR. At one of the meetings, he gave a speech in front of all the children, declaring that religion is the opiate of the masses. A few of the kids disagreed with him. Then Ina suggested an experiment, let the children ask God for candy. They did, but nothing happened. She then instructed them to ask the same from Comrade Stalin, and candy started falling from the ceiling. However, along with the candies, plaster began to fall, and the sounds of planes, rockets whistling, and explosions filled the air. The war had begun, Hitler had attacked the USSR. 
Sally, along with the other children from the orphanage, was evacuated. On the way, they encountered a truck, and Ina ordered the workers to take the children with them. However, they were caught by aircraft, and Sally didn't manage to jump onto the truck, which left without him. After some time, German soldiers found Sally sleeping under a tree. They captured him and brought him to a camp, where they began checking the documents of the prisoners. One of the Soviet soldiers suggested that Sally discard his Soviet passport. After a moment's hesitation, Sally hid his documents and pretended to be a pure-blooded German. He was brought before the commanding officers and claimed that his name was Joseph Peters, that his parents lived in Germany, and that the Bolsheviks had forcibly taken him to Grodna. At that moment, some of the German soldiers had trouble with other prisoners. Since Joseph spoke Russian, he was asked to translate what the prisoners were saying. After listening, the boy reported that they were speaking with Yakov Jugashvili, the son of Joseph Stalin. The Germans hurried to report the valuable prisoner to their superiors. After some time, Joseph arrived in a village with the Germans. The Germans concluded that they needed him because he spoke several languages. There, Sally encountered one of the boys from the orphanage. The boy tried to expose Sally and reveal that he was Jewish. However, Sally started a fight with him, and while trying to escape, the boy was hit by a vehicle and died. The German army set out on another campaign. During a stop, Sally quickly ran to the trees to relieve himself. He had to hide and be very careful while using the toilet. Suddenly, two soldiers called out to him, and a captain summoned Joseph. Standing at attention before the commander, Sally was offered a position as a translator in the unit, which he accepted. He also asked what would happen to the Jews, whether they would be killed. The officer asked him not to worry about it and said that they would most likely be relocated to Madagascar or Siberia. Arriving at one of the houses, Joseph sees children who have been hanged and doesn't want to look at it. But one of the Germans forces him to observe, saying that these pigs killed his parents just because they were Germans. Overwhelmed by emotion, the young man fires at the house, starting a fire. At that moment, Sally realizes he is confused about his feelings, he doesn't know who his friend is and who his enemy is. In the house, one of the soldiers, Robert, shaves the young man and dictates a letter to his beloved woman. In the evening, Sitting by the fire, Joseph takes out his Soviet passport and throws it into the flames. A moment later, Robert approaches him and reveals that before the war, he was an actor and had never been to Berlin. The next day, the boy locks himself in the shed, wanting to take a bath. But as soon as Joseph immerses himself in the water, someone grabs him from behind. Panicking, he jumps out of the water and sees that it is Robert. Robert notices that the boy is circumcised and realizes he is Jewish but promises not to reveal his secret, saying not all Germans are the same. After this incident, the young man talks about the rituals and customs of his people. After some time, Joseph finds himself in the trenches. There, he translates intercepted Bolshevik conversations from Russian to German. He hears them discussing that one of the Germans is in their sights, and at that moment, a German standing near the trench is shot in the stomach. Robert orders the boy to stay in the trench while he rushes to help the wounded man. However, Robert is also shot in the stomach and dies. As Joseph weeps over his dead friend, the others quickly abandon their position. In the evening, the boy decides to contact the Soviet soldiers, telling them that he is a Komsomol member and a Jew who wants to surrender. They instruct him on where to go and what to do. Finding a rifle, the young man raises it above his head and heads toward the river. At that moment, German soldiers appear from behind and capture the Bolshevik position. Thus, instead of becoming a deserter, he ends up in the front lines of the attack and becomes a hero. Joseph returns to the command post, where he pleads with Hauptmann to let him stay and serve with his friends. However, the officer refuses, saying that Joseph has already proven himself and now it is time for him to learn. Moreover, if the boy agrees, he and his wife would like to adopt him. Some time later, the Reich sent a special courier to bring Joseph, the heroic soldier who would later become the adopted son of Hauptmann von Lurenau to the elite Nazi youth school, the Hitler Youth. On the train, the woman accompanying Joseph explains that smoking is not allowed at the school and tells him that she finds him very appealing. Unable to resist, she seduces him. The next morning, Joseph arrives at the Nazi boys' school with a woman. He is introduced to the other students and takes an oath to Hitler. Thus begins a new chapter in his life, where he must be even more careful and cautious. After settling into his room, he explores the restrooms and showers. Fortunately, they have doors, and showers are taken in underwear. After checking out the restrooms, his roommate Gert takes him to the dining hall. There, Joseph meets Lenny, the waitress, who also shows interest in him. The other boys envy him, as Lenny is considered the most beautiful and unattainable girl. The school year has started, and in swimming competitions, he takes first place with all his gear on. During one of the lessons, the teacher talks to the boys about how to identify Jews, describing them as ugly creatures in contrast to the Nordic race of Germans. At one point, the teacher calls Joseph to the board. He measures Joseph's face from all sides and tells everyone that despite a significant amount of mixed blood, he still has distinctly Aryan features. Joseph, who has been tense the whole time, finally breathes a sigh of relief. Joseph, along with the other students, is working in the workshop. 
their work is interrupted by Gert running in, saying everyone needs to hear an urgent announcement. The loudspeaker broadcasts news from the front. The bloody battle near Stalingrad is over. All the soldiers who fought in that battle have died, but their sacrifice was not in vain. They died so that Germany could live. The boys receive this news with tears in their eyes. Joseph and Lenny start spending time together and begin dating. Walking past a bakery, Lenny sees some pastries that look very tempting, even though they are made of plaster. Joseph tells her this, but she replies that he has no imagination. Later, remembering their conversation, Joseph comes up with an idea to become like everyone else. He decides to stretch the skin on his penis, make folds, and fix them with a thread. When he returns to school, he immediately goes to perform these manipulations. After some time, Lenny invites Joseph over to her house and introduces him to her mother. There, he learns that Lenny's father was killed on the front. Joseph experiences unbearable pain both day and night. A classmate who notices his distress informs him that there will be a medical examination the next day. The following day, while waiting in line, Joseph pretends to have an excruciating toothache, and he is taken to the dentist. The dentist ends up extracting a perfectly healthy tooth. That night, Joseph wakes up again in pain. Going to the bathroom, he sees a horrifying sight. His flesh is inflamed, and pus is beginning to collect. The thread idea didn't work, and without it, the skin has slid back down. He realizes he needs to be even more cautious. Because of this, he can't get close to any girl, especially not Lenny. Lying on a meadow with his girlfriend, she tells him she is ready. But Joseph refuses, saying she is still too young. Leaving the meadow, they come across a large number of gravestones. Joseph learns that this used to be a Jewish cemetery. Lenny then says she hates Jews and that if she met one, she would slit his throat. Joseph defends his people and slaps her. Offended, Lenny runs away, leaving Joseph alone. One night, Joseph dreams about his parents and decides to visit the ghetto to try and find them. However, entry to the ghetto is forbidden, and the only way in is by taking a tram that passes through the ghetto without stopping. Joseph boards the tram and looks out the window, seeing a horrific scene of hungry, ragged people. Suddenly, he spots a woman he thinks might be his mother. After reaching the end of the line, he decides to go back and again sees the same woman. He's never entirely sure if it was really her, and he never sees her again, despite riding the tram many times afterward. Joseph returns to school and continues his studies. One day, he decides to visit Lenny, but she's not home. She is now collecting packages for the front. Her mother invites him in and reveals that Lenny is pregnant by Gert. Overcome with emotion, Joseph confides in the woman that he is Jewish. She promises not to reveal his secret. In a fit of rage, Joseph bursts into his room and attacks Gert. Their fight is interrupted by a school officer, and Joseph is summoned to the police station. At the station, a policeman inquires about Joseph's parents. They need to restore his documents, and he plans to make several inquiries. After leaving the building, Joseph realizes that only a miracle can save him now. At that moment, the city is attacked by aircraft, with rockets flying from all directions. One of the rockets hits the police station directly, destroying the building completely. Mobilized, Joseph, along with other students from the school, is stationed at one of the positions. The officer tries to force them to shoot at the enemy. At some point, Joseph realizes he doesn't want to shoot Soviet soldiers. Running away and dodging bullets from his former friends, he makes his way to the Bolsheviks and surrenders to them. Sally is taken to the Soviet command. He tries to prove that he is a Komsomol member and a Jew, not a German. But the officer doesn't believe him and considers him a traitor. He hands a pistol to a former Jewish prisoner and allows him to kill Joseph. However, at that moment, Sally sees Isaac. Isaac can't believe his eyes, his brother is alive. Sally's parents were killed two weeks after he left Wuj. Isaac stayed in the ghetto until it was liquidated and was then sent to a concentration camp. While Sally was courting Lenny and shouting Heil Hitler, his parents were already dead. That night, sitting with his brother, Isaac tells him that they are being handed over to the Americans. He will get clothes for Sally from the concentration camp. He also asks Sally not to tell anyone his story, as no one will believe him anyway. From that moment on, Solomon Perel decided to live solely as a Jew. He left Europe and emigrated to Palestine. When he had sons, he performed their circumcision without hesitation. He is glad to finally live among his brethren. How would you have acted in Sally's place? Would you have made the same choice to survive? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.